Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to do a series of videos that uh, go into troubleshooting and uh, try to get into some different techniques, things that I've said on a lot of other videos, but I was going through some stamps just now and um, I came across this one right here. It's by Gumbo Graphics and now uh, I don't know, I guess defunct company. Uh, the line has been sold to someone else and uh, if I get that information I'll post it in the uh, notes section. But I have uh, quite a few uh, scenes to catch up on on a swap that I'm in and uh, I don't know, this stamp really spoke to me and I've been wanting to do kind of a, a deep sea uh, type of theme and figured I'd just do that right now. Um, this is the boulders with lichen. I figured I'd set some kind of foundation for the uh, for the uh, scene uh, with some rocks here. This is lantern fishes. Uh, I know I, I pictured some kind of a uh, scene uh, kind of that was uh, inspired by some of the. Uh, uh, National Geographic uh, types of photographs taken in the, uh, you know, these deep sea submersibles, but um, I don't know, we'll do just some kind of scene that's uh, referencing that type of look, but uh, but it really won't because I'm going to have uh, some waves up here and uh, maybe some moonlight, so anyway, um, we'll see what we come up with here. Okay. That was the boulders of lichen. I had some little area on each side, so I colored, you know, recolored a bit of it and overlapped on that side and re inked this side and did the same on the left hand side. Okay, so that's the foundation right there. Um, I thought I would put this fish right on top of there somehow. I'm trying to figure out a good spot for it. Looks like he might kind of that curve might blend in nicely right there. We shall see. Uh, some of these old uh, Gumbo Graphics was one of those companies that feature a lot of old engravings, and uh, I love the detail on these engravings. Uh, before uh, um, modern printing, you know, for imagery, they weren't using photographs, so they, you know, they had to have these artisans be able to uh, do tight, detailed uh, illustrations um, to illustrate a book and. Uh, that's where a lot of these old engravings come from, and I, I really love them. I'm into black and white illustration, and and also uh, someone that likes a lot of detail. So uh, those were a lot of my favorite companies tended to uh, utilize a lot of that uh, type of artwork, you know, from kind of like the Dover style of. Uh, copyright free illustration books. Um, adding this other kind of fish in here. Making it into a school of fish. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a dead fish, but I thought it would look kind of neat. suddenly realize that I don't, I don't know if I've left myself very much room for uh, these waves, but we'll see. Okay. I'm going to get real close to some of these fish right there. So, I'm 
going to take this and really wipe off the bottom of this. I'm going to blot it so that it fades out um, down in the bottom portion. By the way, this fish is also by uh, Gumbo Graphics. Okay, this stamp right here is the Waves Medium uh, Stampscape stamp. And I'm going to stamp this off at an angle so that I'll be left with a little bit of sky. Uh, so maybe I'll be able to play around with a little bit. overlap a little bit uh, the previous wave impression and where it overlaps you shouldn't be able to see the seams I you know ideally you want your scenes and images to be edgeless and the scene to be seamless in an ideal sense as far as scenic stamping goes all right Turbulent seas. I'm trying to think if I want to do another one over here. You know, I'm not sure. I think I might. It's kind of it, this scene. Obviously, isn't going to be something that uh, is representative of uh, you know something that's kind of more photographic, you might say. It's more of an interpretation of a kind of a, I don't know, someone's idea of a, the sea maybe, or I don't know, I think it's kind of a nightmarish vision of it. Um, I don't know, that's not my, uh, Intention here, it's not supposed to be spooky or something like that. It's supposed to be more kind of like a scientific uh, uh, look. Well, I don't know, not scientific, but maybe some kind of old illustration of uh, you know someone's idea of the sea. You know, like you see these old maps with these um, giant sea monsters coming out from the uh, sea. Know, from maybe stories brought back to them or whatnot. Okay, this is a moon stamp. It's called the Full Moon Large. And I have this little bit of area here. And I'm going to try that up there. This moon that I drew back when, it's not just rounded, it's triangular. Uh, triangular in shape because it has this tone around it and the theory was is that you can stamp it and then when you start toning in the scene you don't have to get so close to the uh, <coughs> the edge of uh, excuse me the edge of uh, the moon because you'll already have some of that surrounding area but what I would do is I would kind of blot this off on the edge a little bit so that it fades out around there the moon. <clears throat> okay, now this is the way that I see myself toning the scene in. Um, I see that moon as my source of light and uh, I see this oscillation of light and dark across the surface of the water, maybe on these little um, wave crests. Maybe those would be catching some of the light. And down here I probably see a bit of an oscillation of uh, light and darkness just for some variation. And down here I see this lantern fish and maybe I'll put a bit of a glow around that lantern right on the end of that little lure of his. And I see this lit down here because 
this is kind of the star of the scene. <clears throat> so you want this to be act as like a spotlight and the reflected light from that spotlight on him. So it's creating kind of a diagonal <clears throat> dialogue of light source and reflected light right there. Anyways, that's the theory. Um, we'll see how it comes out. Sometimes it, uh, sometimes it comes out, you know, fairly close to what I intended it, but I would say the majority of the times I'm, I wouldn't say I'm surprised by what I see, but, uh, you know, because usually I don't have too much of a idea in mind. You know, it's just kind of a loose um, feeling of what I might want. And uh, I just kind of let the scene develop. But, <clears throat> but if, you know, if pressed, I, that's probably what's uh, what I'm thinking about. Okay. Now, I'm thinking about working a little bit off of it of what I've been doing in the past, you know, in terms of starting with a really light shade and then work into it and going darker. Um, on this one I was thinking about just starting off with black and blending that in. It's going to take a little bit more touch, but um, I'm not sure. Um, maybe I'll do that in some areas and Maybe I will start off with some ocean aqua. I was thinking about doing more of a photo tint where I kind of go in with dark colors and then I just kind of bring the light shades back into it. Um, hmm. I tell you what, let me see. Now, seeing if I had my other cloud stamp around here. I might want some little bit more variation in there. Oh, okay, what the heck. I'm just going to go for it. Okay. Normally I'm telling you to start off with um, uh, more slippery inks. This is a Marvy ink and it's not too slippery. You know, like I said, it penetrates the paper pretty fast, okay? See, it's a bit kind of streaky here. It's because it's already set. It's not a slippery ink. I smeared it a little bit, but for the most part, it's set. All right. So I have to move into the scene a little bit more uh, carefully because once it's set, it's pretty hard to move it around. I mean, I can go darker all the time, but uh, you know, you can't really remove ink. All right. Now with something like a thicker ink, you can kind of move it around a little bit. And if you're starting really light, it's not a big commitment to that uh, to that value. But when you're starting with black, a thin black like this one, you just have to be a little bit more careful. Okay. And you notice I'm kind of starting in one area right here. I'm not trying to work the entire scene like this. I'm just working a small area um, so I can kind of maintain a little bit more control over it that way. Okay. Look around these fish. Now if I start getting into some areas, some wide open area like that, I might want to add a little bit of uh, ink, uh, thicker ink. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. This is a bit of aqua Adirondack Lights reinker fluid. Um, a light um, ranger ink would be a good thing to go with. The inks are thick and don't penetrate the paper too quickly and allows for kind of more of a uh, allows for more of a kind of a, a manipulation of that application of ink uh, before it sets on the page. So I can feel this. It's really it's a lot 
or uh, slick to the touch. Okay, let's move this, switch it around and try from this angle. some of my waves. thinking I might need some more wave impressions right in the middle there. I think it's too bare. Right, let's do that. It's a little bit easier for me to to work around. All right. Starting to pull a little bit again and grab. Let's get some more of this. Uh, Anchor fluid on there. going with a light touch on this. Okay, continue now. I'm trying to think of a good way to have this fish kind of stand out from the background, and I think I'm going to kind of uh, darken the area behind him and right over him like that. Uh, the image itself is lit right on top there, so I just took that, toned it in right over the top of him like that to kind of make him stand out a little bit brighter from that moonlight hitting him. And remember, you know, kind of, I see these scenes as kind of more like building a kind of a stage. 
stage more than um, you know seeing this as like a you know, snapshot of uh, you know reality or something like that it's kind of more of a uh, I don't know a idealized lighting type of situation um, kind of based on what my idea of uh, the scene's about and directing the viewer's eye. I have this kind of oscillation of light and dark going across the surface of the uh, water. All the white caps. Remember, the scene wouldn't be too dark, I mean too light to begin with. And supposed to be kind of a murky, you know, dark atmosphere. Um, after all, the waves are a little bit uh, kind of stormy looking. It's definitely not calm seas. And on top of that, the moon's out, so um, it's going to be dark and kind of stormy. kind of left the bones, um, you know, for the most part untouched by color on those uh, fish just to kind of make them glow and stand out from the background uh, a little bit. Um, in holding the uh, stylus tool quite often, I have it on its edge going for a smaller area. Sometimes I'm doing that type of mark, like that. Like maybe in these little areas right here. That's yeah, that type of thing. Um, just kind of working around some different waves. And I think it was a good idea to put some of that uh, Aqua Ranger Industries Aqua on there. It's just I'm having such an easier time with the stylus tool and blending my colors, you know, moving my colors around. There. Moving the black ink around, I guess, because it's mixed with a much thicker uh, type of ink, brand of ink, I guess. Sometimes the lighting schemes kind of reveal themselves after you kind of get into it. I'm looking at it right now. I see this kind of wave here coming across here, and I'm seeing this as one kind of surface right here where I'm going to darken in this area around it. Just to kind of move it around a little bit uh, to, cre to create kind of volumes. All right. Okay, so if I kind of relate this shadow up here to this one down here, it kind of creates a different surface right around here. And this area right here becomes one. Right. Kind of so, I mean, I can keep dividing it up. Like, for example, I can kind of darken this area right here, right here. And I'll darken this area right here and make it the same value so it's like the waves kind of dividing up um, into different planes and uh, it's thus being affected by light differently. You have darker areas, lighter areas, okay? It's not all the same exact uh, value across the surface. And I mean, I, I'm not doing it where it, you know, absolutely should have been done, okay? It's just that's where I just chose to put it. I mean, you could, we could have done it anywhere. You know, the, the big thing is just uh, uh, creating variation. All right, so another area, you know, I mean, this could be easily be a meadow and you have a, a grassy field, just have some of the areas a little bit darker and some areas a little bit lighter. Uh, just 
I mean, uh, for a little bit of visual variation, and uh, when you get that variation in there, what you create uh, potentially is um, more visual interest uh, for the viewer, you know. Uh, so something's not so redundant. Um, if things become too redundant, what happens is um, with the surface of a card, it looks more like a pattern, okay? Doesn't mean that all patterns are bad, but I think if we're looking at a scene, it, you know, it's, it's more potentially interesting um, in terms of a texture than, say, you know, a striped wallpaper or something like that you know, where things are supposed to be uh, uniform. There's certainly a place for that, but uh, in kind of a landscape, uh, uh, you know, I would vary it a little bit more. Okay. Okay, let's deepen the shadows a little bit. I like to hit my corners, the four corners of the scene. Let's make that rock stand out a little bit more, maybe. Darkening the shadows. I'm kind of dabbing now because if I smear, the thing comes right off. Alright, so I dab. And I guess that creates a little bit of a different texture, too. So you can see that, really see the benefit of uh, that aqua ink. You know, you can really manipulate your colors even after you've kind of laid them down because the ink is still very malleable. You know, it's, this ink is kind of sitting on top of a, a very slick surface and it's still, you know, even after I've applied it, you know, done those initial streaks, um, you know, quite a few minutes ago. Um, it's kind of lubricated the, you know, the surface of the paper a little bit and I'm going into it with another wet ink, so it's almost like you're stamping wet into wet. Well, maybe not almost, it, that's what you're kind of doing. So see, that's what makes it easy to kind of manipulate. Now, if I want to get really dark, that might be a problem, you know, because it's not setting on the card so fast, so what you might want to do is heat set it, or just kind of wait till this ink absorbs into the paper a little bit more, then go back over it again, and you'll get darker uh, tonations. Um, but as for me, and right now this tapping seems to be working just fine. It's kind of building up little beads of ink on the surface of the paper as opposed to wiping them off, okay? Okay. It's a little bit too light in there for me. I, I need to darken it in a little bit. And maybe darken the perimeter. If I darken the perimeter, so, it also works to contain the composition a little bit more. And on this card, I do want a little bit of containment. It's, it's a fairly busy uh, scene. decided that uh, I want this area back here darker overall, so I'm going to really add in some color and blend it in. It was too light throughout here. Um, I want most of the viewer's attention to go to this fish down here, so that's why I'm kind of darkening in some of these highlights, not making them so pronounced. Here, I 
Okay, it's starting to stand out a little bit more. That area up there is a little bit too light for my taste, okay. Okay, let's add a little bit more atmosphere around the moon. I'm going to streak some colors across the moon. I can use a black, but it's kind of more of a gr silver grayish tone, especially after adding that aqua into the mix. Okay. Much more subtle moon. Add a little bit of tone around that corner up there. Remember, four corners for compositional containment. By darkening the area around the moon, it makes the moon stand out a little bit more. It's not going to make it super bright because I've already kind of laid a lot of tone over it, but it will stand out more by contrast. You make the area around it darker. Okay. Uh, kind of like so. Okay, let's add some tone around the uh, waves down here. Okay, we're getting there. I think I might want to add a little bit of warmth into the scene um, uh, through the use of uh, maybe a uh, very light can you um, could be one of those seashell pads or a distress ink maybe I'll figure it out once I get to that but I've left some areas of light or white the moon some of these fish here a little crest of a wave in this area down here and I think by adding a little bit of warmth here 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 what we were, we're doing is we're reiterating the uh, the source of light and its reflected um, areas down below. Um, we're doing it right now through the use of value, you know, those are lighter areas, therefore it's kind of representative of reflected light from that source, but you can add another element into it in terms of temperature. Right now everything's cool and you add that warmth, you know, coming from that source, and that's where it's kind of important that I left it, kind of the white of the page. All right. Okay, going on some of these rocks down below. imagery goes. Um, actually, let's go back to that that uh, warmth. Let me see. Oh good, I do have a clean tip here. I didn't clean this off before I started the video. Um, let me try this one right here and let's see what I have. 
Okay. Um, Peach Bellini, I believe that's the name, the same name as the Adirondack Lights naming convention um, of this range of colors. Um, Adirondack uh, Lights used to be called seashells. They're the same colors, but uh, yeah, just different name. Okay, that works out pretty good. I'm going right into the, my light areas with the um, Peach Bellini. And let's bring some of it down right into that rock and on top of that fish. It's like a, these colors are so light, it's, it's like a photo tinting, you know, and people used to tint black and white photos. Actually, I like it more than I thought I would here. I'm adding it down over the top of some of that blue, and it's kind of creating a, a greenish tinge, you know, because there is, you know, this peach color, there's going to be some yellow in it, so where the yellow overlaps blue, it's kind of taking on kind of a eerie greenish tint, which kind of looks good uh, for me. Okay. Let's add in some additional imagery here. Um, I know this is a plant, but uh, yeah. land plant, but we're going to use it going to represent maybe something akin to giant kelp. Let's take this away here. Flip it over. Okay. Now let's see if we can get, get some good impressions from this. Transfer. I remember I've laid down that thick layer of kind of um, thick ink, so I'm stamping wet into wet. I want that to transfer. Okay, eh, good enough. Okay, I don't want to cover up the fish. I want to kind of enhance it a little bit. By framing it. I've kind of framed in tone in terms of making it darker around the edges and now we're kind of enhancing it a little bit more by darkening the area around it with the use of imagery and this happens to be you know kind of larger imagery so puts you kind of right in the seaweed looking through uh, into the scene. Kind of anchoring it a little bit. And remember, this isn't really a, supposed to be, you know, a representation of, a, you know, something that maybe a diver would see, but, you know, just kind of a representation of someone's interpretation of, uh, Maybe they're, you know, the great unknown in terms of, uh, you know, the lore of the ocean or whatever, deep sea. Okay, probably going to overlap some fish, no problem.
for a little bit of textural variation as well. Seagrass has that. And I know I said deep sea. You wouldn't have this type of, you know, growing plants down there, but again, I, I think it looks neat, so. so there you have it. Okay, fun stuff in terms of uh, the imagery. Um, yeah, it's a murky scene, you know. Contrast here's the last uh, scene that I did. Yeah, it's like light and airy. I don't know for me. I like a little bit of a emotional contrast in terms of a scene once in a while. So um, I'm going to go into it and do some other embellishments. Let me get a little bit of more of a close up here. Let's add some um, highlighting effects. But before I do that, I think I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I'll get back to the final touches and I'll um, bring all the different videos into, uh, into one. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I will be right back. Okay, this is where a lot of the fun begins for me. Um, I do enjoy putting the compositions together, but sometimes it's always a bit hectic, uh, kind of on a more complicated uh, composition, um, when you don't know where things are going, and uh, it's always one of those things that's really rewarding when uh, things come out well, uh, but I really enjoy doing the... Uh, uh, putting in the details. Anyway, here's the composition right now. It's kind of an oscillation between lights and darks running across the surface of the uh, card. What's lacking right now is some of the uh, oh, some of the the life of the scene. Um, There's little details that can make all the difference uh, and bring a scene to life. Uh, this right here is a pilot choose. Um, Zero seven. I'm take it. That's the uh, point size. Uh, white gel pen, basically. And I'm gonna go in, and this is kind of the uh, star of the scene. It's this uh, kind of lantern fish. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm putting in some bubbles coming out of its mouth, uh, kind of reiterating the. Uh, underwater aspect of the scene and I think this is a perfect opportunity as well maybe to use some of the opaque white um, paint actually it's bleed proof white I think I'll use on this too and uh, we'll see how that goes I, I see it as kind of a spin drift coming off the uh, top of the waves and I think with some of these bubbles I'm going to make them fairly large kind of like that it's kind of fun uh, some of this moon maybe uh, the moon will be moonlight the moon's fairly gray, so I won't make any of these areas too light. But I do want some of them to stand out. Okay, kind of splashes coming off the top. I'll start it with the uh, white pen. Actually, I don't know about the bleed proof. We'll, we'll see how this goes. I'll you never know how it's going to kind of turn out, so kind of just uh, take it one step at a time. 
Let's see how it comes out. Uh, in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if uh, see how effective uh, just this manual um, addition to the uh, of the uh, highlights comes out. You know, I, I guess the bleed proof white is also manual, but there's you know a, a very large element of. Uh, kind of uncertainty when you're kind of splashing on some of that paint and that's what I'll be doing. I'll kind of be uh, probably uh, be uh, doing a kind of a splash splatter um, application of that ink or paint to the uh, scene. Okay, let's see. See some of these crests of some of these waves catching that light. Uh, add a little bit more, like so. It's really bringing some of these areas to life. Um, Kind of in the background um, areas in there, you take out some of these highlights, and uh, you know it's looking rather dull back there. Okay, and I should note, um, I stabbed out this scene last night, so it's kind of had overnight to set up and dry. Uh, the whole scene was really rather moist um, at the end of the uh, maybe uh, stamping and uh, color application uh, process. So I just let it dry overnight. on the fish, giving it a little texture too maybe. And a form of some dots. Um, the rock below has highlights on it. Um, the highlights were simply established by, by not toning it all out. Uh, like on the rest of the rock, but I'm going to go and add some additional texture to it. Mm, just for some variation within the area. You have a textural variation, but there's also a variation in value by having something very light in, in those areas. You know, in the form of a little white dot. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go in and on some of this kelp, I'm going to add a few little highlights just to pull the uh, plant. Out from the background a little bit. Uh, this seems to be a really great shell pen. Again, it's a pilot. Choose uh, C H O O S E. It was sent to me by someone in Japan. I would guess that you can get them domestically. Uh, I'm not sure what the international market might be. Uh, take a look at your local craft store. Okay, let's see. 
breaking out these fish heads a little bit. Okay, a few little highlights on them. Okay. All right. Mm, I think that's that might be as far as I go with with the uh, white pen. You know what? Here's one thing. All right, we have this sky up here. And it's really hard to tell where um, surface and sky ends and the other one begins. So what I'm going to do is, now I know this is a full moon right here, and chances are under a full moon you wouldn't see a sky full of stars, but in this case I, I don't care. This is going to be a, a visual... Um, kind of a visual and textural, um, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, uh, vehicle to separate those two areas. Okay. And by simply bringing in that sky texture to that area, it'll separate um, surface from sky. Okay, so you have a sea down below, and the sky up above. Okay, let's go for a little bit of variation in the form of some bleed proof white. Um, let's see, I was going to stop this uh, recording and start it again when I got this set, but maybe I'll we'll see what, what I do with this. Um, this bleed proof white goes dry on me. This bleed proof white can last quite a long time. I think this is probably 20 years old at this point in time. Um, actually, it's older than that. And I don't use it that often, so it dries out on me, but um, I just uh, reconstitute it with a little bit of water like that. And stir it up a little bit and get it the right consistency. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of splattering this around, so I don't want it too thick. Um, it's kind of a creamy texture. Maybe it's more like a, you know, like a cream that you would add to, uh, maybe a little bit thicker, like a, to coffee or something like that. A little bit thicker than that, but um, anyways, you can kind of experiment around with it old toothbrush or you can get a stiff uh, brush of some paint brush of some sort and let's see how this works here it's gonna be a, probably a little bit messy such as the nature of flicking paint around oops as I'm doing this right here it's kind of flicked uh, some of my paper already so and I don't know, it's kind of the right consistency then. Okay, so kind of coming off the uh, crest of the wave. They call that spindrift. Used to be a surfboard company in Santa Barbara called Spindrift Surfboards and that's why I know what the uh, what that's called. Okay, kind of flickering it off. It's coming off and you know definitely a random pattern. Some of it looks pretty good and some of it, uh, I don't know, I'm not so into, but just a little bit more texture. Okay, I 
think that's about right. right there. Kind of a little bit sloppy in some areas. I think I might uh, tone some of it back out with a little bit more uh, ink on top, but otherwise not too bad. Not too great either, but say uh, la vie, such is the nature of uh, kind of uh, taking a chance on something. But that being said, I don't know. I always add more things to this, and you know, the thing is to just keep working it a little bit. And let's see. All right. I'm going to have to wait till it dries. I can look at this paint right here, and it's still wet in some areas where it's really thin, like little tiny speckles. It's okay, but. I'm going to have to wait till it dries a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tone some of it out so some of it remains and some of it doesn't. Some of it will look more of a, a gray. Let's add more bubbles to this uh, fish. Maybe what it, you know, kind of represents is more of like a scary version of a Kind of like one of those fish tank things where you have one of those things where there's an air pump going into something at the bottom and it opens and closes its mouth, letting bubbles out, whatever that type of thing in the uh, fish tanks back when. There's always a creature of the Black Lagoon or treasure chest or something like that. Makes me want to get a fish tank again. Okay. All right. I think that's about right there. Um, let's see. I'm trying to take a look here and see if uh, that the paint there is dried up yet. Let me get one of those globs off of there. Just kind of sop it up a little bit. Uh, this is the uh, the bleed-proof white that I'm kind of taking off right here. It comes right off, so you don't even you know, get something that you don't like. Uh, you just kind of sop it up, and you can kind of buff it out a little bit, and uh, it'll come right off. Okay, that's good. Uh, better. All right. Okay, this is the. Uh, there's a little bit of black still on here. Um, I just had these stylus tools sitting out here overnight. Um, okay, I'm going in and adding the final touches to this scene. I've been tapping in a little bit of uh, pigment ink onto the crest of the waves. Making some areas a little bit uh, kind of mistier. You can see it kind of moving across here. That's the same type of effect that I would do in something like a Milky Way. You can see kind of the, uh, the softer kind of glow working in there. And it's where kind of uh, light meets dark at that. Uh, the meeting of those two areas, you know, for the most part, light meets dark, and that little misty area kind of appears where the darkness uh, begins. And it just kind of uh, softens it up a little bit. I wouldn't do it over everything, you know, you can see it kind of that little area up there. Um, I think maybe some area. Uh, some of it around the moon, perhaps, just for a little bit of a, a variation and atmosphere. And we'll see how it looks. If I don't like it, I can just wipe it right off and it comes right off. Okay. 
bit of atmospheric effects. <clears throat> and uh, if I forget to say this, um, I'll say it now, but uh, thanks for watching. I just downloaded uh, uh, the existing uh, segments of this video, and I, I realized this lesson is already, I think, over an hour. Um, I don't know. It's like a HGTV episode or something like that. And if you're like me, a lot of times I just uh, record it and I kind of jump to the reveal, and maybe that's a good idea with some of these videos. Uh, can't imagine it's too dynamic to watch that, but anyways, I've tried to cut through a lot of it this time. Uh, I do have the software now to just kind of merge all of these different segments together, so uh, when I have time, I'll go back and do notations of where uh, certain types of things uh, start to take place, but uh, anyway, I, this is just one of those scenes that I've just kind of felt like doing for a while. I, I don't know about this scene in particular, but you know, the use of some of these images. I just get a kick out of using uh, uh, some of these. Back in the day, if you used to walk into a store like Stampa Barbara or something like that, uh, used to see uh, whole sections devoted to kind of wildlife and kind of cool uh, types of imagery. Um, you know, they might even have areas of just fish or something like that. Um, skeletons. This one happens to be a fish skeleton, so anyways, those were kind of fun times. some kind of quirky companies out there had some really cool uh, curated uh, batches of designs okay kind of adding in a little bit of mist and atmosphere around this fish right here just to give it a little bit of a um, kind of a, a glow perhaps kind of surrounding them screen that whole time. Let me see, let me move this back in. Okay, adding a little bit of glow down here. That's what I was talking about. some of these stars. Okay, what you do is you just um, do a little dot like that. And in fact, I might make some of these brighter. stars. Okay. And I think that's about done. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I really need to kind of mat it off somehow. But um, anyways, this is a half sheet size of paper, which means it's um, eight and a half by five and a half. 
uh, eight and a half by eleven standard piece of paper. And uh, what we have is uh, kind of a, my uh, interpretation of uh, some kind of deep sea, you know, um, scenery. And kind of a uh, presented in a kind of a whimsical format. It's kind of become more, um, I don't know, more, almost more celestial than, uh, I don't know, terrestrial, you know, kind of based on Earth or whatnot. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm looking at that here. A couple more things. I mean, I'll put a little bit of a glow around some of these. So it's like, uh, kind of a little, kind of. Um, blur, um, I guess, figuratively speaking and literally, uh, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, land and sky. <laughs> I guess you yeah, have these little things coming out of its mouth right here. Um, little glowing stars, you might say. Kind of this whimsical kind of a notion of a, you know, how stars are made. I guess I guess they come from a a, a lantern fish. <laughs> Let me see here. Actually, I kind of like that idea. Let's do this. Kind of a, a spreading of a, stars out into the uh, sky kind of emanating from this little sea dweller. Kind of adding some of these larger stars, you know, that are kind of coming from this uh, fish down below here. Maybe we'll have one kind of in front of the moon as well. Add some layering in there. So, anyway, I guess the theme or whatever you can say of this uh, kind of storyline has uh, changed, uh, to say the least, from initial in intention to final result. I guess it literally kind of revealed itself to me uh, last minute. It's a starfish, I guess you'd say, star maker fish. I guess there's no such thing as starfish anymore. I guess they're sea stars, right? Okay, yeah, actually that looks a little bit better. It's a little bit more whimsical now. It's kind of fun. This little fish down at the bottom. And he's creating these bubbles. And the bubbles are kind of glowing. And going up through the uh, layers of the sea. And kind of exploding out into the uh, night sky in the form of uh, glowing stars. So. I don't know, just a little fun kind of whimsical scene. Um, and based around a couple uh, images that I wanted to use. So, fun stuff for me. And uh, thanks for watching as always. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll try to get to some uh, additional videos with some more conventional types of uh, scenic layouts here in the next few days and try get into some uh, troubleshooting uh, videos as well, what to do and kind of what to avoid. Okay, thanks for watching.